Well, good morning, church. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you happy to be out of that cold and in some place at least warmer than outside? It's good to have everybody here. Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to open with one you may or may not know. If you want to follow along, it's song 41 in the hymn book. But you may already know it. It's called In the Sweet By and By. Don't you shake somebody's hand? There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. hymn books away and find your praise book. Find song number 33. You may not need the words. The song is called Thy Loving Kindness. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. 
Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time good. God is good. So <laughs> y'all know how it is for Donna. Close, you got close it. enough. Got you to laugh. Amen. <laughs> I'm so thankful to see each of you here this beautiful morning. January, it's almost over. And I want to just say wish happy birthday to all those who had birthdays this month. There's a lot of them in here. I don't know who all, if you got your hand, raise your hand if you had a birthday this month. If you know who they are, point them out. <laughs> yeah, back here in the back, Dr. Cash, Austin. And how old was Austin? 13, oh, monumental birthday, awesome. Teenager, yeah, give me a hand. And Emma back there, is it 16? Yeah. She's 16. <laughs> Y'all growing up? And David was uh, born in 57, so you know how he is. So <laughs> it was a good year. Anyway, and I'm thankful to his parents who gave me a loving husband and a great friend. But uh, yes? Four. All right, give her a hand. Happy birthday, four years old. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to thank you. Get, uh, Brother Ron, he's going to come around and I'll. Uh, if you got a praise or prayer request, just raise your hand. He'll bring you the microphone. Whatever's the Lord lay on your heart to share this morning. I yes. I uh, say one thing. Uh, my friend and I, uh, we uh, went out on Thursday. We went up through the Blue Ridge Parkway. What a wonderful time I had. Uh, I was stuck in all day on Wednesday, but, uh, you know, it was a wonderful time to get out and everything. Enjoy the uh, weather. Amen. And enjoy the uh, scenery up on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm. Man, such a beautiful country it is here in yes. Virginia. It is. I tell you this. It's true. Man, I, I, the scenery mm -hmm. was wonderful. I really enjoyed the trip up there. And, uh, man, I really enjoyed myself. We stopped in at the uh, lodge, but they were closed. So Peaks we had to turn around and go back. So, but... Uh, I just like to say, <clears throat> I had a wonderful time. Yeah. My friend come and picked me up and took me out for a while. Awesome. And uh, it was so nice and everything. And I really appreciate him doing that for me. And uh, uh, I hope y'all get a chance to go up to the Blue Ridge Parkway and see the scenery up there yeah. sometime soon. Amen. Thank you. It's a beautiful place. I'm right here front. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Diane. Well, I didn't freeze yesterday, Amen. did y'all? It was cold. It was cold, but <laughs> I didn't go out anywhere yeah. yesterday. I stayed right in my house where it was warm. Amen. But I asked you to continue to pray for Stacy. She has, she got a good report at the doctor this week. Good. Now she's got to go to Charlottesville for the, um, the cancer doctor, which she yeah. hasn't seen since the beginning of the fall. Yeah. So they're going to be checking on her about that. As far as I know, that is pretty much in remission. Yes. Yeah. Just pray that it is. Yep. And pray for Rhonda. Yes. And pray for my whole family that God will gather us all back up, Amen. put us all back here in these seats where Amen. we were. That's and right. I love you all, and I'm just glad to be here this morning. I thank God and praise God for my salvation. Amen. And I praise God for my family. We hit Amen. bumps in the road, but God always brings us through. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes. Go ahead. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I, um, before Christmas, um, the Lord, is it on? Hello, hello, hello. There it is. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got it. <laughs> the Lord led me to this guy named Charlie Gibson uh, through my work. And I had a whole day's appointments to run, like five or six people to see. And he was my first appointment of the day. And needless to say, I got up with this guy and none of the rest of my appointments got done the rest of the day. <laughs> this guy was so fascinating to me. He's old as Methuselah. He lived through the Holocaust. Mm. He was in Germany. Mm. And um, wow. evidently, if you were Jewish during those days, they would put a Star of David on you, That's and right. mm -hmm. basically, you they tattooed it on you. Yeah. You went eventually to the gas chamber. Well, the only thing that really saved him was he had blue eyes. He was part German, 
and part of something else. They didn't know what to do with him. Mm -hmm. So he was tattooed and he showed it to me with a number mm -hmm. on That's his right. wrist. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And um, he s described all of those years of scratching in gardens, uh, trying to find a rotten potato to eat, trying to find just anything yeah. and everything he could to eat. There was nothing to eat. Somehow or another, he defected to the United States and um, got a job with the Air Force and stayed with them for a long time. This man has went through not only the Holocaust, but he's losing his sight. He has uh, glaucoma. But he told me, because I didn't hear from him, we made great friends, and he, he's a Chevy buff like me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I like love Chevy. old Chevys. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know it? I go in the garage, and there's the beautifulest 57 Chevy you have ever laid awesome. your eyes on <laughs> that has been under a blanket for 40 years wow. when he, while he served in the Air Force. Wow. And uh, he wants to, he wants to basically give the car to me and, and stuff like that, but I couldn't do it. And um, this guy has had th like three children die of cancer. Mm. His wife died of cancer. Um, but through it all, he has kept his faith. Somehow it has pulled him through. And uh, he had a guitar and it broke on him when I talked to him. And I asked him the other day, I said, Charlie, why haven't you been in touch with me? Call me. Why haven't I heard from you, you know? And he said, David, you wouldn't believe what I've been through in the last month since you've seen me. I've been in Charlottesville and I got cancer, which, you know, I, I knew that. And he said they drilled some holes in my head and I've got to go back, as a matter of fact, this coming Monday, which is tomorrow, to uh, be operated on again. So, um, through some help of some family members with Rhonda, we help get this guy a guitar, and uh, so we're That's gonna let him have that guitar. That seems to be his uh, his outlet. You know, yeah. he loves music. I that is. And while we were down at his house, you know, he he can pick and sing anything, cool. and loves gospel music. I invited him here. Uh, him and his uh, girlfriend. So one day you may see Charlie Maybe. here Maybe. if he Maybe. makes it through this operation. Yeah. Um, but please, his name is Charlie Gibson. Pray for him that he, he pulls through. I mean, he's had enough bad things happen to him and hit him and really hurt, but he has kept his faith through it all. And uh, he's a good man. So please keep him in your prayers. His name is Charlie Gibson. We sure Thank will. You. Lord bless him. Amen. Pray for his surge to go well and everything. Definitely. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. I got one here in the back. Awesome. I would just like to thank God for this beautiful day, and I would like to yes. thank him for the power of prayer. Yes. The power of prayer I have seen just in the last two or three weeks is the most miraculous thing that I have ever seen. I have seen situations that have just completely, you know, turned completely around. I mean, like with, with Dave's mom, you know, as soon as the yes. power, as soon as the prayer request hit Facebook, I mean, yes. it's just, you know, and I'm not all out there just the my side mouth and shut it up. <laughs> That's a microphone. It's sitting on Facebook, you know, I mean, and I know it's, it's traveling with people all over the world. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and, it you is. Know, and we're so thankful. My cousin Carol and I had put it out for, for prayer for her. She had had... Um, problems with one of her daughters. There was an alienation between her and her daughter. Mm -hmm. Well, they have now gotten back together. Amen. And she just That's found good. out, she's 63 years old, and she just found out she's going to be a grandmother for the first time. Oh. And she is absolutely <laughs> ecstatic. Yeah. But she did get some bad news. Um, her nephew, he's 34 years old, and they found a football-sized tumor oh. on his colon. I see. I see. Um, it's a stage, late stage two, stage three, 
cancer. Yeah. Um, so they're supposed to go in sometime in the next couple of weeks and yeah. remove the tumor. The and then they're going to start chemotherapy and stuff on him. Um, his name is Michael Dalton. If y'all could please keep him in prayer and keep him in prayer for salvation also. Yes, indeed. So his I know his mother and father are both saved, but I do not believe that he is. So if y'all could keep him in prayer for salvation also. Lift him and and my up. son Robbie has been coming back around visiting, Amen. and I know that's that's completely of God. I know yes. that. So if y'all would continue to keep that in prayer, I'd appreciate it. And my family also. Thank you. Bless you, Debbie. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. She'll get turned up. Keep talking. He'll turn it up. I'll talk loud. But um, I want to praise the Lord um, for my husband and my music ministry. Yes. We've been uh, invited to the first race of the IndyCar Ministries yes. in St. Petersburg, March the 30th. Amen. Yeah. To minister there. Yes. But Amen. I'm telling you, we need to get mad at Satan. Oh, but yeah. He, he likes comes to come against around. us. <laughs> yep. You know, when he has, when God has plans for us, so you know what? He loses, and I'm telling him that right now, and God wins. But uh, I want to thank the Lord for a beautiful new granddaughter. Oh, congratulations. My eldest daughter. Congratulations. Awesome. My eldest daughter has four boys, and I thought she'd given up, and she finally had a girl. Little girl. Oh, that's wonderful. Her little name is Piper. Piper. And she's so healthy, and they're all so happy. Amen. And, um... And I have another daughter with a 10th grandbaby on the way due in April. So I just oh. want to praise the Lord for that. And I want to praise the Lord for this church. Amen. You know, Barry and I have been around a lot of churches. And there's a lot of folks that play church. Oh, yeah. Now, none of us are perfect. No. But Barry said it so many times. You know, every time we come and we leave and we talk about y'all while we're gone and, you know, come back. And they got the main thing, love for each other. Yeah. And that's all right. Jesus. That was yeah. his last commandment. To yeah. love God and love each other right. as thyself. And you don't see that in a lot of churches. And I just want to tell you that and how much he and I have appreciated you in the times that we've been here. Appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. Yeah, that's part of my Sunday school lesson this morning, too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes. Hey, um, God has definitely answered prayer and healing from you know, my surgery and, and relieving the pain. And um, so I went to the doctor on Friday and he looks at me and says, well, you know, I'm not comfortable releasing you to go back to work yet because I know that the graft hasn't healed. It's only been eight weeks. Yeah. Um, and I said, if I don't go back Monday, I lose my job and I lose my health insurance. So he uh, reluctantly agreed to release me, um, but I have to wear a back brace. Good. Went up to get it and um, I said, I just laughed. I told the lady, I said, well, I hope I have enough to get it. She said, well, we'll file insurance. I don't know how much they'll pay on it. She said, but you're responsible for what's left. Um, but not today. We'll send you a bill. I said, okay, that's fine. $975 is what this brace costs. But I had a choice of wow. taking the risk on getting the brace or losing my job. Yeah. That wasn't much choice. So no. I go back to work tomorrow. And just if you'll keep me in prayer yes, that indeed. I can make it through that yes. and that um, God will, you know, keep healing me. Um, he was just worried about protecting the graft. So he's hoping yeah. that the back brace will do that. Good. And um, I That's just good. won't be here as much because I have to work on the weekends. Um, I'm off every third weekend and I'm really going to miss you guys. Keep lifting you up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Pray for safety at work and everything. Lord bless you. Who else? All the way over there. Amen. Got some on this side. It's on his way. Amen. Um, talk to Ada Duvall. She's doing well. Keep her in your prayers. Um, she's uh, dealing with some uh, infection issues and, and going to Charlottesville travel and get some help up there as well. The doctor. So you keep her and her family in your prayers. I appreciate it. Yes. I just want to say we had a busy day yesterday at the food bank. Yes. We served 130 families, Woo. not Amen. including the 70 we've done downstairs before yesterday. Yeah. That food bank is getting big. It's growing. <laughs> we are feeding Amen. more people. I know Wednesday and Friday when we're open up, we have anywhere from 60 to 70 people lined all around the building at 9 o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah. It's just getting a lot. A lot. We need some help. <laughs> 
They got a good crew down there, and I appreciate everyone involved in that and helping here yesterday on third Saturday. And like I say, it's open on Wednesdays and Fridays 9 to 12, every third Saturday 9 to 11. And uh, if you'd like to come on and help or have a – those listening to my TV radio, if you have a group or ladies or ministry team, come on and help. We can sure use it, <laughs> and you'll be blessed. But I'm thankful for everyone that's involved. Yes. Um, we we didn't do praise reports last week, so I, I didn't get to tell you guys, but I, I had a hysterectomy last Tuesday, yeah. and I did so well, thank God. I was up and moving around even before the end of the day, um, and I feel like I'm healing really well. I'm functioning pretty good. good. Um, I'm having some ver vertigo, which apparently is common. I had a robot surgery. Mm -hmm. And apparently that is not an uncommon side effect. So no. I need for prayer for vertigo because when I stand up, I feel loopy. I yeah. can fall down. Uh, also, one of my sons, uh, my oldest son, he has sciatica, so he's not functioning. We're just not functioning in my house really well right Bless now. You. <laughs> I, and Ryan has had some type of um, lung issue that's been going on. Uh, I think a lot of people have had it, but... He's had it since the 12th of December. He's on his third round of antibiotics. So we need some healing prayer for my yes. household and be so grateful. God bless you. Just praise the Lord for success in surgery and continued healing. Yes. Thank you, sweetheart. Right, Pam? Well, I just want to thank God for being able to be here and for my salvation. And um, thank him for answering prayers for yes. me this week. I had a full-fledged panic attack this week and it lasted a few days I hate those um, <laughs> I despise them you know I yeah. just one day I finally just like I cried out God I can't take it anymore please you know mm -hmm. and and I asked for prayer from my mm -hmm. friends and family on Facebook and you know it was that day that I felt the relief amen and you know even though things that were causing me to, to do that, you know, we're still there and yeah. still the worry and, yeah. but you know, I just felt that lift. Yeah. Yeah. And then David, uh, he, uh, broke our bumper. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> and it started to come back because I had to give the news to Dennis. And yeah. Well, he came home that day with some good news of his own. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, that's God right there. Oh, yeah. He would have been really upset. Yeah. Know, but, but yeah. It's, it's always, <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank God for, so for that answer prayer. Amen. And all the answer prayers that Praise I've seen Lord. this week and, yes. and the past weeks. And it's just awesome. I mean, yeah. he tells us to expect it and, and to look at it. But doesn't it just humble you when, when it actually happens? Oh, yes, like, it does. You know. I can't help but be amazed, really. mm -hmm. even though Amen. he says he's going to do it. But yeah, but it's a wonderful feeling. But that's just yeah. a praise from me this week, and, Amen. And, and hopefully it'll continue through this coming up week. And, Amen. Um, I want to ask for prayer for my mom because she's the one I got it from. Yeah. And she's going through the same kind of thing. And yeah. Well, bless her. She's so, a sweet um, lady. And yeah. I also want to mention Carly Luke's stepdad, yes. Justin Green. Yes. He was supposed to have surgery yesterday. He's got 11 blockages. Mm -hmm. And they found out, I guess it was Friday, um, it's 12. So they moved the surgery up to today. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I, I tried to find out what time it was. Um, it's probably say. already happened. Yeah. Yeah. They do that early in the morning. Yeah. But just, just the keep doctors. him and, and the family in prayer. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I see morning we've got somebody to come sing for us that I am just so very proud of and has become him and his wife have become just good friends of ours and church family over the years let's welcome Nikki Blanton as he comes sing for us I want to introduce this song this way with a scripture like always But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. It 
It's number five. advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. God's word came to the Jews. They're the natural branch. We as Gentiles saved by his holy blood are adopted through that precious blood of the Lamb of God. The Holy Lord Jesus Christ through His sacrifice before I say any more about the sacrifice. I'm glad to see Jerry in here this morning. You know, this morning he looks like a distinguished Don. So I, I, don't, I don't see nobody with, doesn't he? Doesn't he? he looks like a, like a Don, you know. Uh, 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 a favor? How does, how does he say about the favor? <laughs> I promise you, he looks like, I expect the guys with machine guns in the back somewhere. <laughs> so we won't pick on Jerry no more today. <laughs> I, I do want to, I want to uh, read just two more verses to introduce this next song. Um, let me see, it's in the first, chap, first chapter of Corinthians, and I can't, can't even speak right now. It happens. You know the good thing, let me, 
just say this, because there's been a lot spoken about the Jews and about family, and thank God we're in that family. And, you know, one of the reasons I chose this song this morning, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, is because for you few who are here, well, not few, there was many here when the Wednesday, the Christmas Eve night, when we had the Christmas Eve service, and I absolutely lost that song. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible. But you being my family... You'd look right beyond it. Never said a word. Never said, man, that was lame. You did terrible. No, you didn't say that. You didn't say that. You just nodded my head and thought it. But that's all right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just kidding. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord and to be with people like-minded before God? You know, we come here not because to see me or to see you. We come here because we know the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is here. What is His title? The King of Glory. God's only begotten Son who is eternal in the heavens. Amen? I'm going to introduce this song and get on with it. Let's see. Um, all right. Two verses, 17 and 18. For Christ had sent me not to... Wait a minute. Am I in the right spot? Let's see. Let me make sure. Yeah. All right. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with w wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Not of works, nor tell of good deeds, for naught have I done to merit His grace. All glory and praise shall rest upon Him. So willing to die in my place, I will glory in the cross, in the cross, lest his suffering all be in vain. I will weep no more for the cross that He bore. I will glory in the cross. Ain't that the truth? My trophies and crowns, my robes stained with sin t'was all that I had to lay at his feet unworthy to feast from his table of life till love made provision I will glory in the cross, in the cross, lest his suffering all be in vain. I will weep no more for the cross that he bore I will glory in the cross in the cross in the cross be
I will weep no more for the cross that he bore. I will glory. I will glory. I will glory. brother Nikki. I will glory in the cross. Amen. His word is so good. We could all rise to read of God's word. This time I ask brother Matt come bring that to us. If you got your Bible, can you tell me what book? Uh, we're in Matthew 4.4. 4. Okay. Uh, I just want to say that Mike took the words out of my mouth. This country's losing it. It's, it's, it's getting bad out there. Um, our, the, the man who represents our country to the rest of the world has said he claims he's a Christian and then the very next breath legalizes same-sex marriage and just signs bills and law puts laws into effect and and I just want to say that you can make amendments to the Constitution of the United States but you can't make amendments to the Word of God and that it, it, there's the world is stepping out it's like I said last week this is the book of reality the, the country is stepping out of the boundaries of reality and just living like that and I just want to offer you a little sarcasm this morning, just to make a point. <laughs> um, you know, Obama calls it moving into the future. That's what he called it when he made that movement. And I say, I suggest say we move into the future and just go ahead and say legalize stealing. Let's let's just legalize stealing. Let's just white that out in the in the book and, and white it out of the Ten Commandments. Legal. I, I've been a closet thief for 15 years now. I, I'm tired of feeling suppressed and repressed. And, and uh, y'all, I feel bad every time I do it. And you know, I just. I, I need to feel free about myself, express myself. Y'all are going to like me. Y'all are going to love me. Y'all are going to love me for what I am. In fact, I want you to make laws and amendments to the Constitution that protect and uphold my right to steal whenever I feel like it. I wanna, and how about, no, how about, <laughs> no, how about, how about we go ahead and, and legalize murder for that fact? This is just legalized murder. And, uh, you know, uphold my right and make the judicial system enforce and uphold my right, law enforcement to enforce my right to, to murder whenever I feel like it. I've been, I'm tired of feeling guilty about myself every time I, I kill somebody, you know. And um, it's getting that bad. That that is that's just around the corner. I'm being sarcastic, but that's just around the corner for this country. We're, if if we can bend one one some of the laws of God, we can bend all of them. And uh, like Mike was saying, he took the words out of my mouth. When it gets that bad, it's going to be that bad. It's just around the corner. This world is going to be stealing and murdering and raping and same-sex marriage and all that stuff. And it's right around the corner. And but but we don't have to worry about that because uh, we got what we call the rapture. And before it gets that bad. The stealing and the you know all-out mayhem, murder, and all that. The Lord's going to take us out of this world. Mm -hmm. That's called the Great Tribulation when it gets that bad. Yeah. But um, the scripture I got for you is uh, Matthew chapter four, verse four, and it says, "But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God.' And that's every word, not some of them. You can't white out sections." You can't, you know, you can't just white out sections that you don't, you don't feel apply to you or you don't like. And the, and the other scripture I got for you is uh, talking, speaking about whiting out sections. It's Revelation chapter 22, verse 19, and you'll specifically like this, Nikki. Uh, and if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. May God bless the reading of his holy and precious word. Yeah. Well, while you got your Bibles out, turn to John chapter 21 this morning. John chapter 21. We're going to look in verse number 15. It says here, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. 
Then he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. The question that I am going to ask everyone this morning that I want you to ponder in your mind and in your heart is a question that people have been asking for thousands of years, and that is, what is love? So many people want to know what love really is. I know some of you folks are thinking of the group Foreigner right now as I speak. <laughs> And there is a song called, I Want to Know What Love Is. If you look at, listen to the words of the song, you will find that it is written by someone who is searching to try to find out about love. And on, their, on a, a, a video of them singing it on YouTube, you scroll down and read the comments that people make. One person wrote on there, I'm 55 years old and I still do not know what love is. And I thought that's sad. But he is not alone. Many people do not recognize love when it's there or they think something is love when it is not. Thousands and thousands and thousands of songs are written about love. Country, rock, pop. Uh, bluegrass is mostly worried about going up in the mountains and eating something. So we're not too... <laughs> You know, they, they evidently they got it, I guess. I don't know. But almost all music is written, about, and blues of all things is written about nothing yep. but love. And yet with the knowledge that we have about things today, most people cannot describe love. They still can't do it. Well, there's a reason for that. A lot of times there are three basic types of love described in the Greek language and shown by example in the Word of God. The three basic forms of love in the Greek is eros, phileo, and agape. Yeah. One form is physical. The other is mental. And the last one is spiritual. The very first one that we will talk about this morning is the basic one, the first one, eros. We're going to look at that. Physical love, physical attraction. It is a romantic love for your mate. It is inevitably a little bit selfish, if not a lot. You love your lover because there's something about them that moves you. Sounds like the Beatles, don't it? It's the way that he or she talks or he or she walks or the personality that they have or the physical beauty or the intellectual power, but it's always based on something that attracts you. Poor old Percy Sledge tried to describe it back in 1966. That's how old that song is. When he said this, and I'm gonna just give you a couple of quotes, and I know this sounds silly, coming from the pulpit, but we need to get down to where the rubber meets the road and discuss this. Percy Sledge, and I can't imitate his voice, but he simply said, when a man loves a woman, can't keep his mind on nothing else. He'll trade the world for the good thing he's found. If she's bad, he can't see it. She can do no wrong. Turn his back on his best friend if he put her down. Then here's the other one. When a man loves a woman, spend his very last dime trying to hold on to what he needs. He'd give up all his comfort, sleep out in the rain if she said that's the way it ought to be. Well, as most of you know, that don't last. Eventually, somebody's going to get tired of sleeping out in the rain. <laughs> That form of love starts out as a selfish love. It's more of a, not a give and take, but more of a take. And it is to fulfill the needs uh, that the one has for physical intimacy. And yes, God created that. Let's not act like that's nasty and that's dirty. God created that. He created it 
to be enjoyed within the bonds of matrimony with a man or a woman. And if he had not created that to be great, none of y'all would be sitting here. <laughs> Let's just be honest. If it was boring, it would not, you would not be here. Okay. But a relationship on Eros cannot sustain itself. It must have the other loves blended in in order to make a marriage last. If you are planning on basing your marriage strictly on the physical, I want you to understand it will not last long at all. Indeed, you could wind up like King Solomon. The Bible says that King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said have nothing to do with them. And it said, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. And Solomon clave unto these women in love and he had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart. This form of love, if not handled God's way, will turn you away from God. Not only can it do that, it can get you in jail and it can get you killed. And if you allow Eros love to run your life, you will wind up with the wrong one and you'll regret it to the end of your days. You need to understand that. That's a very dangerous thing if it's not handled properly. The second one is phileo. Intimate affection between personal friends. These are people that you like. It's reciprocal love. You love because you are loved. You love the people that you're hanging around with. People that you like to sit down at the table and eat dinner with. And we all think of the groups of folks that we really do love to hang out with and hang around with and talk and so forth. People that you get on the phone and you talk to or text. People you go out with. This is friendship. In 1 Samuel 18, a classic example of that are two of the greatest friends. It says it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home anymore to his father's house and Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. They were the best of friends and we are like that. We are knit together with their best friends. We enjoy being with them. We have people that we love dearly in friendship and many of them are found right here in the midst of God's house and what better place to make friends than among people of like faith. That's how it should be but I need to tell you that phileo is not a perfect love. However, as we love because we love those people because they love us. We hang out with each other because each, we like each other. But when they stop having any use for us, we move on to other friends. That's true. Sad, but it's true. And again, be careful who you befriend under this kind of love and know that it is not perfect. Then there is a third one, agape, and it's more than romantic love. It's more than friendship. It's understanding. It, it is creative and, and redeeming goodwill toward all men. And it is the love of God operating in the human heart. It is the overflowing of love which, here's the bottom line, seeks nothing in return. And when you rise to love on this level, you love people who don't move you. You love those that you don't even like. You love those whose ways are even distasteful to you. You love every man because God loves him. Agape is a perfect love. For it is the kind that only God can give. You've heard somebody said, so, and so has a face that only a mother can love. Well, there are some people that are so rotten that only God can love. Now, let's just be honest. That's true. You ever, you've met people like that. And you can love them too, 
when God's love is in you. God can show it through us. Romans 5 and verse 8 sums it all up when it said God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I hear a lot of people, they get all high and mighty and they think they are in such close contact with God and everybody else is second class trash that they think that God, that Jesus waited for them to get straight and dirt and then died for them. I'm sorry he did that 2,000 years ago before anybody was born. Jesus did not wash you and then loved you. He loved you, then he washed you. He loved you and me when there was nothing about us to love. 1 John 2, 5 said, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Hereby we, how, hereby we perceive that we, the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? I heard a report this morning of over 130 families fed by the food bank yesterday. And you know how much the food bank makes off of that? Nothing. Nothing. You know what that is? That is showing the love of God. That when, when people come to get food and clothes and they're asked for nothing in return and the people volunteer their time and their sweat and their blood and their compassion to help those people, that indeed is the love of God in its purest form. The Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And finally it said, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. The love of God. I love it when Leela sings that song. It is so, so very true. You and I cannot fathom the love of God. We understand a conditional love. We understand a love that is based on what do I get out of it? Or are you going to love me back? And on and on and on. But it's very, very difficult for a, a, a human finite being to understand that there is someone that knows them like they really are and still loves them. You know, a, a lot of us that we all got buddies and pals and friends and stuff like that. You ever seen the cartoons where there would be a balloon up and they would have their thoughts written on the thing up there? If everybody walked around to where your private thoughts were up in a balloon, wouldn't none of y'all have a single friend left in the world? <laughs> and y'all be trying to hunt me down and kill me, most likely. But thank God that's not revealed. And we're able to still have friends in spite of it. The Bible has a, a, a chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about love. And it says right here, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I do not have, I'm going to substitute love in there because that's what it means. And I have not love, I become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. No matter how wonderful your voice is, no matter if you've mastered every language in the world and you do not have love, you're just a noisemaker is what it says right here. You are a noisemaker. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I can understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith that I can remove mountains and I have not love, I am nothing. All of your degrees and all of your abilities and all of your talents and all of those things, if you don't have the love of God in you and showing it to other people, you, uh, the Bible says you're nothing. You're nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor 
And though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. No matter if you, what you give, if you don't give out of a love of God in your heart, none of it profits you at all. And then it describes the things that love does. It said, love suffers long and is kind. Real love of God puts up with a lot. It suffers for a long time. And it's kind. It's never jealous. If you have jealousy in your heart towards someone you love, that's one of the other two. That's not the love of God. Jealousy. It vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It seeks not its own. It's not easily provoked. And it thinks no evil. And it does not rejoice in other people's sins. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. The, one of the most important things about the love of God, if you have the love of God in your heart, you will not smooth things over to somebody that you love. You will tell them the truth in love. What good is it to lie to somebody and tell them that everything is okay with them when it's not and you see them sinning and you won't do it. That doesn't really show love right there. That shows cowardice. If you really love somebody, you will do everything you can to make sure they are right between them and God. If you knew that your loved one that you truly loved was on their way to a devil's hell, you would do everything you could to stop them from going there if, in fact, you have the love of God in your heart. It's as simple as that. It says it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, Endures all things. Love never fails. If you tell somebody you don't love them no more, that is either eros or phileo, it ain't agape. Bible says where there be prophecies, they'll fail. Where there be tongues, they'll cease. Where there be knowledge, it'll vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. We do not fully understand God at this point. Even though we are saved and we walk with him and we have a, a relationship with him. We do not fully fathom his mind and his heart right now. I don't, I don't think it's possible. So we know in part and we prophesy in part, part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. One of these days we will fully understand and stand before God and we will, we will feel his love to the fullest and we'll have an understanding of why he does what he does. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. Now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as I also am known. What this tells us in this verse right here is the people that we have in heaven right now, that they've gone on before us, we will know them when we arrive. Somebody said, I wonder if I'll know my, my friend or if I'll know my husband. I'll know my wife when I get to heaven. Well, isn't it kind of silly that you're going to be more ignorant when you get to heaven than when you are down here? That's crazy. Of course you'll know them. And Paul says it right here, I'll know even as I also am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now let me talk to the married folks here for a minute. Come here, baby. Come on up here. Now, I can't lecture the women, but I can show lecture the men. A marriage has got to have all three of those elements to work. Now, I had a weekend with this woman right here. 
that would make a Presbyterian speak in tongues. <laughs> Y'all ain't old enough to hear it. We, we had the most romantic dinner Friday night that I think we've ever had, maybe once in our marriage. It was so, it, the atmosphere was just absolutely flawless. And we had such a time. Even the waiter came and talked to us for 30 minutes. That was awesome. <laughs> the next morning we went out in all that cold yes. and sat on a park bench beside the York River and just talked. Let the wind blow, it don't make no difference. We went walking and all the way home yesterday we talked about what a wonderful, romantic, great time we had. Total, it's the most stress-free thing I can possibly think of. But if you only had one of those forms of love, that would not make it. It is true, she is my lover, she's my wife, and I love her dearly. But it's important for married couples, you better be friends. Oh, yes. You better have that second level. She is my best friend in the world. It's a good thing she is because we work in an office now five days a week with each other. We go home together. We spend the night together, get back up together. There's rare that, I'm going to tell you something. Matter of fact, I went through the McDonald's drive-in <laughs> on Friday. No, Thursday. Thursday. On Thursday. The woman looked at me, she said, well, this is the first time I ever seen you without your wife. I didn't even think she knew who I was or cared. I mean, thousands of people go through there and I explained to her, I said, oh no, everything is fine. She's with my daughter at lunch right now. But see, the public gets so used to seeing that out of us that it worried the lady at the McDonald's drive-in. You see what I'm saying? You need to have that second level your spouse needs to be your friend or else you got a pretty miserable relationship. I'm telling you it's the truth now. Third level, you want the marriage to really last, to be solid, you better have Jesus in the middle of the whole Amen. thing. That's right. That's your you, yes, sir. That's right. That's your you, you better have, yeah. you need to have the love of God for your spouse because I'm going to tell you a little secret here. If this woman did not have the love of God in my heart, she'd have killed me years ago, okay? That's probably true. Or run screaming into the woods, never to be seen again. You've got to be able, after years of marriage, you know, not all of y'all can keep those good looks like I have, you know? Oh, Lord, lightning bolt's going to strike me dead for that. I wake up, I get up in the morning and look in the mirror and go, what in the world happened to me? Okay, but seriously... You got to have the love of God in your heart for your spouse, and they got to have it for you, and that is how you mix those three together, and your marriage will last. It'll make it. You got to have that. It's so very, very important. If you are if you are picking a spouse, the eros thing is easy. The phileo thing is a little more difficult, but you better make sure that the Lord is the center of that relationship or it will not last. Not today, not in today's time. A friendship must have the other two loves in order to really, really endure because there are times when the relationship that you have with your friend can get greatly strained. But, you know, I mean, you take a look around at the diversity of people in here. How different they all are from each other. There is no way that we could maintain a friendship like we do if the Lord won't in the center of it. That's true. I mean, we got some weird folks up in here. <laughs> but we love each other. Somebody called me a nut the other day and I told them I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on to a good boat. Amen. <laughs> And as long as you are screwed on to a good bolt like God, you're going to make it. Yep. And we can love each other despite our backgrounds and our likes and our dislikes and stuff because that friendship is not based strictly on a give and take, but it's based on the love of God. Amen. But in order to, to know God, you've got to experience the third level, the agape love. <laughs> It is a love that is above our complete understanding. It is one that endures. It's one that is so 
far above the human mind that it's just boggling at times. Some of you have never had anybody to love you with anything but a selfish love. I am telling you that God loves you. He wants to redeem and forgive you of your sins. And all he asks of you is that you repent and look to him, trusting him in your heart. Dallas Home, back in the 70s, wrote a song about the love of God that probably sums it up, for most of us at least, better than anything I can, can read to you or sing to you. He says here, he knew me then, he knows me now, and he died for me. Think about that. He loved me then and he loves me now. Oh, how can it be? He saw my face. He knew the place that I would be today. He knew me then, he knows me now, and he loves me. Some people say that he died one day, but that was long ago. Well, I'm sure that he was a very good man, but me, he did not know. Listen, my friend, what I say is true, that he knew me and he surely knew you. He knew you then, he knows you now, and he loves you. He knew you then, he knows you now, and he died for you. He loved you then and he loves you now, oh, I know it's true. He saw your face. He knew the place that you would be today. He knew you then, he knows you now, and he loves you. And then he ends by saying he knew us then. He knows us now, and he loves us still somehow. Shall we bow for prayer?